Today is Friday, June 22nd, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we climb aboard the pump-out vessel with an assistant harbor master, rejoice with the recreation that all the beaches are fully staffed, and celebrate 70 years with the Cape Cod Art Center. First, a look at today's weather. The first full day of the summer solstice brings a picture-perfect day, mostly sunny with a high near 71, east winds 6 to 9 miles per hour. Let's start with some news you can use. The discussion of regulations for adult use marijuana establishments in the town of Barnstable will continue next week as the planning board considers two separate zoning amendments. On Monday, June 25th, at 7 p.m., the planning board will hold a public hearings on two zoning amendment amendments proposing different regulations related to adult use marijuana establishments. Item 2018-163 proposes to create a cannabis overlay district and regulation for establishing and operating marijuana, marijuana establishments sponsored by Councilors Biedenbender, Cullum, and Schnepp. Item 2018-159 proposes to prohibit non-medical marijuana establishments townwide sponsored by Council President Stein Hilbert. Presidents may Comments may be made in person at the planning board meeting or may be submitted via email to principal planner paul.wackro, W-A-C-K-R-O, at town.barnstable.ma.us. At last night's town council meeting, the Agricultural Commission, the Personnel Board, and the Renewable Energy Commission were repealed. The town council accepted a 50000 grant from the Massachusetts Board of Mental Health to the Barnstable Police Department and the new proposed polling places for precincts 1, 10, and 12 were approved. One way to keep our water clean, take advantage of the free pump-out service at our various harbors. Jared Smaller, Assistant Harbor Master, takes us on a cruise around Katua Bay to pump out a scheduled vessel. A gorgeous day on Katua Bay. We are jumping on board with Jared Smaller, Assistant Harbor Master, and we're going to go pump out a boat. This is a free program to boaters here in Barnstable. Um, Jared's going to tell us a little bit about the program, and you're going to see it live. We've already tied up to the boat. Uh, we open the, always wear gloves and eye protection. Get the cap open. use a diaphragm style pump that pumps essentially right from your boat into the holding tank. Flip this on with camelot buggers. Make sure it's closed so that we don't have anything happen initially. Turn it on. <clears throat> then slowly open the valve. essentially how the pump out goes. Nice and quick and clean as 
You can see it's, there's nothing that leaks out. It's a completely sealed system. And the final step that we do is we leave a business card on board that does have all of the information for the pump out program. They have our phone number and the email address for the pump out program, so if you need service. And we put the date and the time and who pumped your boat. So when these people come back on board, they can see that their pump out was done and their boat's all set and the holding tank is ready for the weekend. How important is it for the environment to do this on a regular basis and not uh, get your tanks too full? Um, the tanks are really, they're a sealed tank, so unless you have a failure in the tank, there's not going to be any leakage for the most part. Um, it's a good service because A, it's free and it's funded through state and federal grants. But it's also just our environment. I mean, the water is a huge resource here in the town of Barnstable in many ways, recreationally and commercially. Um, right over all through this area is a huge shellfishing area. That the last thing we want to do is be pumping sewage into it. Um, you know, it leads to neurovirus and all kinds of other things. Right. So, it just so and it affects the ecosystem and what we are as a town and as a region. Right, and I know that the we're here at the Katuit um, uh, town dock, but where else is this service available? This service is available town wide. Um, mm -hmm. We have a boat here that services primarily the Three Bay area of Katuit Bay, North Bay, and West Bay, and we also travel to Hyannis to offload, and then we will. Also stop in East Bay if we need to. Uh, we do have one regular customer over in East Bay. And then we also have another boat that's in Hyannis that services the Lewis Bay and Hyannis Port area. And that boat can come over here. This is a busier area because it is larger for us. Sure. Um, that boat can come over here if we had a really busy day that needs to supplement. And then we have two shoreside facilities in Hyannis, both at Bismore Park. And then we have another shoreside facility in Barnstable Harbor because there just isn't as many boats. There aren't as many boats that need pump outs over there. Right. So the shoreside facility works well for us. Okay. And the actual um, uh, ability for people to, uh, you know, call and email on a busy weekend, what's kind of the time frame for folks? Should they, you know, kind of anticipate getting the, the pump out? or? Yes. It's always better if you can anticipate and plan ahead for it. Uh, that gives us the opportunity for any weather issues. Uh, yesterday it was really windy that if we wanted to do this yesterday I would have tried to reschedule because it was just too windy. Right. Um, we definitely don't want to cause damage to a customer's boat, to our boats. We don't want to get anybody hurt. There's too many opportunities for bad things to happen if it's a really poor weather day. Uh, wind and lightning are our biggest deterrents to being able to do this. Okay. But. <clears throat> It also allows for staffing changes and other things that may come up that need to take a priority. So we would like a few days notice if possible, but when we're out here on the weekends, that's what we're out here to do. Um, these boats, although they can respond to emergencies and they're fully equipped to handle any of that stuff, the primary purpose of these boats over and above anything else is pump out. Um, Again, they're funded through grants, and as part of that, there's to be used for pump out. So yeah. these boats are out here to pump your boat okay. all the time. And let's just take it to the conclusion. Sure. Once it lands in this boat in the holding tank, <laughs> where does it go? This boat will then go to Hyannis, um, okay. take it by water, okay. and we will use one of the two stations over there. And mm -hmm. then from there, that there are two pumps over there. They're called peristaltic pumps. They just operate on a different style a little bit heavier duty um, because they have a lot further to draw everything from between emptying a 450 gallon holding tank on this boat into the town sewer system. So it okay. goes right into a pumping station that's there at Bismore Park and ends up right in the town sewer system. Excellent. And our north side station as well pumps right from this tank there into a, into the town sewer system as well. So everything okay. is treated properly. It ends up just where it would if you were flushing right. the toilet at your home. And where it should go. Exactly. Exactly. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Now that summer has officially arrived, the town of Barnstable's beaches are fully staffed with lifeguards, gate attendants, and beach aides. John Gleason, Assistant Director of Recreation, dives into what to expect at your favorite spot in the sand. 
It's the happiest time of the year for Barnesville Recreation. That's right, it's Friday and it's lifeguard orientation. With me today, John Gleason, Assistant Director. My goodness, it's here. Summer, it's yes. here. We've been talking about it, you know, since like March, but. <laughs> right, yeah, we have uh, been talking about it with lifeguard tryouts and uh, then preseason with us opening, uh, you know, on the weekends and during the week at Coles and Craigville. And, Today is uh, our lifeguard staff is getting uh, their orientation so they're prepared for all the visitors and residents uh, that will be visiting our beaches this summer. Uh, and then uh, Saturday we open up full time where all our staff is out there at the beaches, all our locations that we staff, they'll be out ready to handle uh, all the swimmers and all the parking and whatever we have in store for us this summer, we'll be ready for it. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about beaches being staffed. So this means that lifeguards will be on the beach Correct. through uh, basically Labor Day at this point, right? Every day? Yep, yeah, every day we'll have uh, our lifeguards out uh, usually in about uh, mid-April, I mean mid-August. <laughs> <laughs> mid-August, our staff starts to taper off um, going uh, back to high school sports and back to college. Um, so uh, usually until about mid-August, we'll be fully staffed at all our locations. Um, and then from there, we'll kind of consolidate down to... Uh, uh, you know, a few places where we can, you know, monitor, you know, the, the water with swimming. Usually it's Craigville, Colville's, Douse's, um, Sandy Neck if we can, you know, and we just try to choose our locations where we feel the lifeguards are best suited. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about ponds this year because yeah. there is um, really no beach to be had at some of our ponds this year because no. of the water table level. Yeah, the water table level is uh, really high. Um, for example, uh, Joshua's Pond in Osserville, um, if you're familiar with that location, it's all the way up to the rocks uh, and then some. Uh, it's covering, I think, at least two stairs right now down to the water and there is nowhere to sit. There's no beach at all. Yeah. Um, so if you'd like to go there, people usually sit on top of the hill on the grass, um, but there's nowhere to sit down below. Okay. Um, Hamlin's Pond was also really high. We just did a, a quick uh, restoration project with uh, conservation and we added some sand to there because they didn't really have a beach either, uh, but we were That's able. That's my to, beach. We were able to get uh, that uh, some sand and stuff like that uh, with a quick uh, emergency conservation uh, restriction plan for that. But uh, yeah, it's it's really high, and uh, you know, there's nothing we can really do about it. Uh, right. We just need some hot weather and some sun to kind of uh, get some evaporation going. <laughs> right. I know that Hamblins does have a nice rolling little uh, lawn uh, up by their bathhouse too, so yep. there is a little bit of spots that you can hang out with a beach chair and a book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's still places to hang out and relax, and you know. Right. Uh, same with Joshua Zero. There's still places to be. It's just, uh, yeah, actually being down by the water will be a little tricky right. for the first uh, couple weeks of right. the summer. And they're still staffed with parking attendants. Yep, we, ha we have parking uh, gate attendants uh, at all the locations. We have lifeguards at all the locations. Okay. Um, and a few places we have beach aides. It's, uh, they're the staff that goes around and picks up trash and cleans bathrooms. And they work about half of the day and uh, kind of assist us in the afternoon until we close to kind of monitor the bathrooms and pick up trash. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about beach etiquette. There's been some things that have happened on the Dennis beaches, maybe some here. Um, what's some of the th things that you want residents and visitors to be aware of when they come to Barstow? Yeah, absolutely. Beaches? I mean, we always want everyone to respect uh, everyone at the beach. Um, so we always kind of make sure that people are listening to the music at a respectable level. Um, if we have, uh, we have some, some beaches allow ball playing, uh, not all of them do, but some do. So we just ask them to go play in those areas so people don't get hit with the ball. Uh, we always ask people to make sure their umbrella is uh, firmly, uh, you know, in the sand so that it's not flying around. Um, and we also ask them to put it at the same, uh, uh, area or further back of the lifeguard stand so lifeguards are be able to watch the water. Uh, some people will put their umbrellas forward of the stands and then it's hard for our lifeguards to see over those umbrellas to watch the water so we ask people to do that. Um, and then we have other common rules of um, no alcohol, um, no smoking on the beach itself. We allow smoking in the parking lot but no smoking on the beach. Um, we don't allow inflatables with an offshore breeze so if the wind is blowing out towards the sea we ask that people uh, 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 don't bring their inflatables or just keep them in the car until maybe if the wind switches. Yeah. Um, so we just have a lot of basic rules that we're, we try to keep um, 
you know, everyone having a good time. Um, so we, we try our best to make sure, you know, we can do that. And we have our staff uh, going out to the towers, and as they're doing that, they kind of monitor uh, behavior at the beach. We have our supervisors that go around and are just, uh, you know, seeing what's going on. So we, we do our best, and obviously there's some times where we don't see something or, or catch it in time, and, and, and it is helpful for people to come up and let us know if things are going on, because then we can handle those situations. And we, we always try our best to uh, do those in a very polite, respectable way. Right. Your lifeguard uh, staff is incredibly well trained. Uh, yes. They are prepared for anything, as last year was a uh, indication. We had a, yep. a Red Cross American hero. Uh, Absolutely. So yeah, t uh, Tim McGrath, who's uh, responsible for our lifeguards, uh, was a former lifeguard himself and beach supervisor, and uh, he does a great job, uh, you know, training our lifeguards. And before that, Patty Machado, the director of recreation, was training them, and mm -hmm. it's just kind of carried on from Patty to Tim, and and hopefully that uh, tradition of our strong lifeguarding uh, crew and their skills uh, stay strong and, and we, we work with them during the week all summer long at drills uh, we have our long orientation that's a couple hours long um, so we do everything uh, that we feel we need to do for them to make sure that they're uh, best equipped to handle any sort of situation at the beach are you excited oh, always excited it's uh, every day you wake up and and, and no day is ever the same. Uh, there's always something new. There, there's something n new that we're learning, uh, you know, a new situation. Um, and like we said, we're, we're pretty well trained, and we, and we do our best to try to think of the best ways to handle those situations. And, uh, and when we can't, uh, we always, uh, luckily, we have Patty as our, our, our boss to uh, refer any tough questions to her because she has uh, so much knowledge and expertise that... Uh, you know, uh, even myself, I've worked for the town for 15 years. There's things that uh, I still haven't uncovered that Patty has seen, you know, right. uh, at some point. And uh, you can always lean on her if you feel like you can't, you know, think of something, uh, a good so a solution. Or, or you might have a good solution, but you might run it by her to make sure that you think, you know, you're on the right path. So uh, we're, we're very lucky here in town. I think the residents are very lucky here in town to have uh, some good high-quality staff to uh, you know, uh, work for the recreation department and to kind of manage, your, manage our, our beach locations. Fantastic. Happy summer. Yes. I uh, can't wait to see everyone out there this summer. Excellent. Thank you. Since 1948, the Cape Cod Art Center, formerly known as the Cape Cod Art Association, has been a gathering place where visual artists of all ages and experience have come together to learn, create, and share their works. We pulled up a chair next to Roberta Miller, executive director, while she painted the picture of the last 70 years. We're here today at the Cape Cod Art Center. A new name, but an old building. With me, director, Roberta Miller. Hi, Paula. How are you? I'm good. That's good. So... The building is the same, but there's a new name. Yes. The so what was the old the name? <laughs> Cape Cod Art Association. Yeah. And it was that name since 1948. Wow. We're celebrating our 70th anniversary this year. Wow. And it's been a really busy time for us. So rebranding at 70. Tell yeah. us about that. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, decided that... Uh, Possibly the name association excluded people in their perception of what we do. We wanted to make sure that people understand that we're a community-based organization, that we're open to the public all the time, that we have activities and events that everyone is invited to. And so we thought, well, maybe we'll change our name this year as part of the celebration. Um, to Cape Cod Arts Center, which, you know, it has a connotation of being much more inclusive. Right, and let's just kind of back up a little bit. The art center here, this building, houses an, a lot of exhibits. You do a whole, a whole lot, lot of classes, of too. Yes, yes, we, um, we're open all year round. We're open seven days a week. Wow. And we have a very large educational program uh, that uh, is geared towards young children all the way up to professional artists. Um, we have beginners all the way to professionals. So uh, uh, it's a very comprehensive program. And so the building is busy all the time. 
Oh. Yeah. And uh, exhibits as well. So these exhibits change out on a regular basis, so there's always something new here? Just about every single month. We have about 15 exhibits a year, okay. including our high school show. Um, and um, we're going to have a very special exhibit coming up on uh, June 22nd that I'm very excited about. Um, in celebration of our 70th anniversary, where uh, we have uh, invited um, artwork of founding members from 1948 through the 50s and 60s. Uh, we have invited artwork from all of our presidents wow. uh, over the 70 years. And we have invited some special guests who, you know, have been uh, longtime members of the Art Center that uh, have gone on to do really great things in the, in, in the art world. Um, so we're very excited about it. Uh, it's going to open uh, mid-June, and we're going to have a special reception on June 22nd at 6 o'clock, uh, which everyone is invited to. Um, and we will, you know, have a display of the history of the art Center and its importance through the art world here on Cape Cod. Right. Um, we're the second oldest institution on the Cape uh, in terms of art centers. Um, the only one that's been here longer is Provincetown Art Center. Uh, and um, a lot of the people who uh, belong to Provincetown uh, Art Association and Museum uh, were very excited that there was a mid-Cape presence for, you know, for them to teach in or, you know, to exhibit. So we uh, attracted Robert Motherwell, Henry Henshi, Hans Hoffman, wow. and, you know, a lot of the really well-known artists to come into the Mid-Cape area in Barnstable and exhibit and teach here. And it's, it's just uh, exciting to see uh, how important, you know, we were in the landscape of uh, art history. Right. And, you know, I think a lot of us do associate art on Cape Cod with Provincetown, but the Mid-Cape area is also a mecca for artists as well. The creative economy, you know, we talk about it in these abstract terms, mm. but the people that exhibit here and the folks that teach here literally are making a living at art. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, we have over 950 members now. Um, and we attract a lot of other people all over the Cape and all over the country uh, to come in and take our classes and, and to exhibit in our, in our gallery. So uh, it is important. Um, there's probably over 25,000 working artists on the Cape now. And, wow. you know, the landscape has really changed in terms <laughs> of that. Uh, and I think when people come to visit, you know, tourists and, uh, and visitors, they love to gallery hop and, and see all of the different offerings. And it's really exciting because you can find uh, great institutions in almost every town. Yeah, that is just fantastic. Yeah. So Barnstable itself, especially the village, is kind of this little uh, hub of art. Um, there is just a wonderful event that happens every year that you curate and, mm -hmm. and kind of get going uh, in conjunction, which is Art in the Village. Right. Um, and that's coming up in June as well. It is. Um, this is our 16th year of having it on the courthouse lawn. Um, it's June 22nd and 23rd from 10 to 4, both days. We have an all-day music festival going on at the same time uh, for both days. And we're going to have uh, some food offerings this year and some exciting artis artisans and crafters coming in to show everybody their work. So I hope everybody comes down. We have uh, great children's activities happening. Um, projects that they could do while they're there and bring home. So it, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Excellent. It's, it's a really wonderful event. I've been several times mm. and uh, tried not to miss it each yeah. year. And how about classes for the summer? Uh, you, I know you mentioned youth, but are there youth classes for the uh, oh, yes. folks this year? All, all year. Uh, we start uh, three to five-year-olds with mommies or caretakers, and we go all the way up to high school students. Okay. Um, 
For the older kids, we have a one-week uh, photography program uh, where they go out on location and shoot with a teacher and then come back and uh, show everybody on the computer what they've done. Um, we also have a, a drawing program and we have a lot of fabulous uh, classes for uh, 6 to uh, 14 year olds so it's a it's a full schedule and your website has you can sign up for classes look at what classes are out there all the events that absolutely are happening. cape cod org. make it easy oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> right exactly excellent anything else you want to tell uh, residents of barnstable about the new art center name well, or the anniversary i just want to invite them to you know come in and and see what we're like and don't be afraid to uh, walk through and uh, see all of the exhibits uh, this year we've been also putting in our lobby a uh, 70th anniversary exhibit of people and artwork who were instrumental in getting us to this point today. So that's been uh, bringing in a lot of people to look at the history. Uh, Barnstable Village is a very historic town. You know, the oldest courthouse is here and uh, a lot of uh, houses on the National Register. So this is a, you know, one other place to come in and, and see its great history. Awesome. Thanks so much, Roberta. Thank you, Paula. Here's a great community calendar event for this evening. Head on down to McKeon Field tonight for the Harbor Hawks First Responder Appreciation Night. At the event, there will be Barnstable SWAT Vehicle, Barnstable Police Motorcycles, Barnstable Police Cam Command Post, along with the BPD drone. Hyannis Fire will have a ladder truck flying a giant American flag. K-9 Nero and handler retired Yarmouth police officer Peter McClellan will throw out the first pitch and you'll have a chance to meet K-9 Nero. Comments, suggestions, accolades? Connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by pigeon carrier. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey and thank you for watching Barnstable today.